So today we're talking about something that's a touchy subject, a conversation that nobody wants to have. And this is a conversation that has to do with false accusations towards men from women about sexual assault, about abuse, and false pregnancy claims. And I want to have this conversation not because I want it to be involved in anything political, anything on the sociological level, anything that fuels hysterical groups, which can be a part of the manosphere, which can be a part of feminist groups. But I want to talk about it because it's a problem that comes up again and again. And I also want to talk about it in the sense that this does not diminish the realities and the horrors of sexual assault. This does not diminish the realities and the horrors of abuse. And this does not diminish the realities of pregnancies that get abandoned or used as tools of manipulation by men. But I want to talk about this phenomenon of when women use it to control, retaliate, or get revenge against men. And why do I want to do that? Because I've been running men's groups for 15 years. I've worked with thousands of men who have had this happen to them. And I hate to say it, it's really common. And there's a road and a path of recovery from it. And there's a road and a path of how to solve this problem that I want to speak about specifically to men who've had this happen. So let's get into it. So if you don't know me, my name's Steve Maeda. I've been a men's coach for the past 15 years. I'm the founder of Austin Men's Development. I've also worked with men in tons of capacities around addiction, around dating, around sex, around trauma, around all sorts of different things, and really anything that men gravitate towards. It's what I do. Uh, I'm a father, I'm 43 years old. I've had a lot of life experience that can speak to a lot of these different things. And a few weeks ago, I made a video about a false pregnancy claim and why women do it and how this comes into play. And again, not to buy into this social stigma or hysteria that men and women are both falling into of blaming each other or trying to have power over each other to get some sort of empowerment themselves, but I spoke to it because it's really common and it's really common within our groups. In fact, what I will say is any man that is sexually active and that can be promiscuous will have this happen to them. And that's really bad, that's really terrible. Now, the statistics for false rape accusations or false sexual assault accusations are 2% of all claims that are made. However, that is 2% that are reported and reported to police and that follow investigation. I don't know if that 2% is including the accusations that just never get entertained or picked up by police, or is that 2% that get taken into the courtroom, into the legal process, and then dismissed because it is false. But that definitely does not include the gossip, the social media, and the shaming that happens to men. Now, once again, I wanna reiterate that things like rape are terrible, things that influence rape are terrible. Things that influence men to think that this is okay or to coerce or to break consent are terrible things and I don't want to support any of that. Although when we don't have those discussions and when men aren't making those discussions, there is a large group of men that become victims to this and that's what I want to talk about. So first and foremost, let's get into what do you do if this happens to you? And I'm going to include the three of these things false sexual assault accusations, false abuse accusations, and pregnancy, false accusations of pregnancy and so on, used to manipulate or control men. So first and foremost, if this is happening to you right now, whether it's going through a divorce or it's you dated somebody and it went wrong and people are angry at you and these things are happening, I want you to go to the links down below and sign up for Men's Development Excellence. It's a group that I've been running. I've been running these groups for 15 years. We have a lot of experience with this and you need a support system. It's, it's as valuable as if you're camping out in the woods. What do you do first? Do you get water? Or do you build shelter? You build shelter first because you need that support system to feel okay, to feel secure, to make the right decisions legally, financially, and diplomatically within the people, within your circles. This could be happening in all sorts of different directions. So number one, that is super important. This is not going to be solved in a YouTube video or a Facebook post or anything like that. This is going to be solved long, long term. There's that sun again. So that being said, part of this you will have to handle legally and you need guys to support you and guide you through this. Part of this you will need to, to handle within your friends and communication and whatever this gossip is being spread because it can happen in two different ways, whether it 
moves into a police report or more likely it moves into gossip amongst friends and this kind of trash talking and so on that is reputation slandering that oftentimes women will do. And again, I want you to stay out of the conversation of how women are flawed and they do this because they're somehow biologically predisposed. That sort of gossip or the Reddit forums or the different groups that conglomerate around that is not going to help you right now. What's going to help you are the specific actions you take to save your reputation, your life, and to save your freedom because if you go to jail for it, which is something that happened to me almost 10 years ago, that becomes a way bigger problem. So we wanna prevent all those things, so let's stop the gossip, let's stop the hysteria, let's stop the expert as to how psychologically, their expertise or the attempt to be an expert and how people are psychologically flawed, and let's actually get to work on how you can be helped in this. So number one, what are they doing? Are they making false abuse claims, false uh, sexual assault claims, rape charges and so on, or is it a pregnancy scare? What you gotta realize is number one, does this need legal attention right away? Does it need a lawyer and what kind of a lawyer? Now the sooner that we can determine that, the better. Because if it doesn't need a lawyer, then we have to be able to manage our reputations in the right sort of way. So things like that would be like, if she's gossiping to friends, if you're hearing her attack you online, or you're getting in online arguments with her, which you should stop, don't partake in any of those things, don't put anything in writing. Is she telling her family what level of rumor is being spread about you? And that's really important to distinguish. If she is going to the police and filing reports and you've been contacted by the police, what you need to do immediately, immediately, is once again, get in our groups, get in Men's Development Excellence and contact an attorney. Do not contact an attorney friend, do not give trade to an attorney, do not do any of those things. What I want you to do is I want you to contact a criminal defense attorney or an attorney that has experience in this and preferably trial experience in this who is ready to work and ready to work for you. I get a lot of comments on my YouTube videos on this person just promoting attorneys, you don't need to hire an attorney. Look, let me tell you something. The real name of the game is, is sometimes you may not need an attorney, sometimes you 100% need an attorney. The real skill is not whether attorneys rip you off or not, there are definitely ones that will. The skill is to determine number one, do you need an attorney? You need our men's group to help you with that and you need groups like that to help you with that. And number two, how do you find a right attorney? How do you find the attorney that isn't going to rip you off and that can represent you best, is not gonna get lazy at the end of the day? That is what you need. You need to know that skill. It is not whether or not attorneys are good or bad. Attorney, attorneys can suck. You need to learn the skill set of one, do you need an attorney? And two, how do I find and vet attorneys properly? If you don't do that, you are completely missing the picture. Because let me tell you something, if you do need an attorney, man, do not go in it alone. Do not think that there's some conspiracy that they're running against you or anything like that. Get an attorney. And if you do not get a good attorney, that bad attorney is gonna screw everything up. So you have to sell everything you own anyway to fix their mistakes to hire the attorney that can do the job. It's real interesting. People don't make the same mistakes with an attorney twice they will make sure and get everything right with that second attorney that's supposed to fix everything. And why didn't they do that in the beginning? And just so you know, I've made that mistake. I've made that mistake and that's why I don't make it again. So if you don't need an attorney and you've gotten in our groups and you can navigate around the situation, which is very difficult, what you then need to do is how do you diplomatically resolve this? How do you get to a spot where you can save your reputation. And a lot of the times what you gotta realize is reputation slamming and them going online or making articles about you or these types of things have a very different protocol than a legal protocol. And those could have legal protocol. You could sue them and so on and, and so forth. But how you can resolve those is much different. And what you really need to realize is that the more that you fight, the more that you attack, the more you buy into that hysteria that they're promoting, the more that you defend yourself or attack, the more that argument is going to get. And that's something, one, that this person isn't psychologically choosing to do, it's a subconscious thing, but that's what they want. And the worst part about it is, is everybody following their hysteria wants that too. The best thing that you can do is to stay silent, is to not buy into it. If you have to address something, you can address something, but here's how you address it. Look, that didn't happen. We have a lot of bad blood in our relationship and it's a terrible thing. I think it's terrible, but don't get angry about it. Don't get dramatic about it. Don't try and fight them. Do not retaliate and try and attack them. Do not do what I know so many 
men who are foolish and just want to ruin their own lives is then take on a slander campaign against them or threaten them or anything like that. That is how you 100% lose. You need to realize that this is somebody who is not thinking straight. This is somebody that has a problem and you do not want to infect yourself with that problem by buying into their situation. So really clearly, if this is happening to you and it's just gossip, which is a lot, and it's ruining your reputation, they're contacting your work, ignore them, well, first, get with our men's group, get some guidance specifically because these things can be so unique, but you want to ignore them. You want to not talk to them. And if it has to be addressed, you address it calmly, you address it without blaming them, and you just state the facts. So let's talk about a few things here, the prevention of it, and why does this happen? The fact of the matter is, and whenever I talk to my female friends about this, they always have an opinion, and rightfully so, and I, and I want to kind of bring that up now, is that men who have a lot of sex partners, so if you've slept with six different women throughout the year, which could be a lot, could be a little, depending on who you talk to, some guys I know it's 20 or 40 or some a huge amount and those types of things, one, promiscuity is not illegal. Society can judge you for it, and it could be a component of many, many different emotional problems that you have, or it could be normal behavior. But society may judge that it is not illegal, and that's something that you should understand. When this happens, statistically, whether guys are good communicators or not, with that volume of women, and usually it's like over six, within two years, one of my clients will get a false sexual assault claim, and they will get a, or a false abuse claim, which is really common, or a false pregnancy scare. And this is really terrible. This happens so much. The answer to this is that we need to become better communicators as men and realize why this happens. Now, why this happens isn't because you are sleeping with a lot of women. It's because you are sleeping with a lot of women and you're a poor communicator. You have sent the wrong message. You've sent a mixed message or you sent a bad message at the end of a relationship and didn't properly break it off. Very, very important to understand for men. And you really need to know how to navigate through this. And again, this is why you want to be a part of something like Men's Development Excellence, because if you're not, you're gonna miss that guidance. And it's, it's really, really terrible. These things can be resolved, the fires can be put out, and it's something that you really, really need to take seriously if you're having a life with a lot of different partners. The first scenario is just straight up victimhood, meaning that you had sex with one person and then it all went into fatal attraction mode and it's just a terrible situation. But a more common situation is gonna happen post breakup or post a marriage. So when uh, a marriage dissolves or a breakup happens or usually when a woman feels guilty for something like she did something wrong where the marriage has to dissolve or the relationship has to dissolve and it's embarrassing for her, she will make claims to justify the, the big break in the situation. Um, this is actually a really interesting thing. My neighbor uh, came to me after witnessing something that happened in our neighborhood where a woman moved out right away and he said the only time a woman does that is when she's trying to hide something or she's afraid for her life. And so if she is trying to hide something, she's going to say it's because she was afraid for her life. And it was really interesting that he had said that because in the situation, it turned out, was that she was trying to hide something. And it's or how the truth came to the surface. Pretty, pretty poor. So it was kind of an interesting distinction that was made by him that I started to see patterns in my own work, again, working as a men's coach with so many men throughout the years, is that women do this. Now, why women do this? We need to be responsible as men on how we can fix that or prevent that or, or minimize it when it starts to happen. So pay attention to this. For better or for worse, when women get scared out of their minds in a relationship and don't know what to do, they panic. And they panic towards a couple things. One, fear towards their security. And two, how to damage or slam your reputation. Now, the healthier a woman is, mentally and emotionally, the less this is gonna happen. But the fact of the matter is, is it's really common. If you start buying into all the stuff online of like how you know women are biologically predisposed, and that could be true, that could not be true, but it's not gonna help you in this situation. What, what's gonna help you is you actually understand some of the psychology behind it. She's scared, she feels bad about something, she feels guilty about something, or whatever the situation is, maybe she doesn't feel guilty about something, maybe she is really scared for her life, but it doesn't warrant what she's claiming to do. What we need to do as men is calm that situation. 
It may seem unfair, it may seem bad, but we need to learn the diplomatic skills of how to calm that down. Because if we don't calm it down, you can say she's psychologically unstable, you could buy into a lot of the stuff that you watch on YouTube or, or read on Reddit or whatever any of these groups talk about of how toxic and poisonous women are. The more you piss her off, the more you end up with a criminal charge. The more you draw this out, the more you gossip back and forth, the more you state what a narcissist is or a person with borderline is or how you were deceived and how you don't have any part in this and you're a total victim, the more you put yourself in a situation where this ignites and gets worse and worse and worse. And the less lessons you learn on how to prevent this or how to be more responsible in choosing your partner. So this is super important. Once again, I'm gonna tell you, man, we can't solve this in a YouTube video. If you really wanna defuse this situation or get to something where you can feel God safe and not have your reputation ruined and not end up in jail, join Men's Development Excellence and get within a group, get on the call, start talking to us, reach out, we'll be there for you. We've done this many, many times and we have not seen anything which is gonna freak us out. We've seen almost everything that comes in the gamut of this. The last thing that I'm gonna bring up in this is how to pick better women. And the best way to pick better women is to better your life. The more that you can get your mentality under wraps, the less subconsciously you're gonna choose bad partners. The more that you can get your emotions under wraps, the, the less you're going to look for solving that with a woman. And the more that true expression, things like love, things like the phenomenon of connection can take place. Now you can take those in any directions that you want, Many guys will be like, you know what, I'm not gonna be in a relationship again, or many guys will be like, I wanna be married again, or I want to date a lot of people, or I wanna have these certain levels of sexual interactions. Gotta change the light again, sorry. So whatever modality of relationships, dating and sex and interpersonal relationships that you have, there is a solution to it, but they will only improve with self-improvement. Self-improvement is massive, meaning that uh, once again, your lifestyle, your habits, your thoughts, your choices, your triggers, the things which you might be blind to have to be looked at. And this again is why you want to get involved in our groups. Things like Men's Development Excellence have almost like unlimited amount of programs that you can find on lifestyle, goal setting, sex, relationships, purpose, ambition, literally anything a guy has come to us with a problem that he wants to solve. We've made a course of it over the last 15 years and probably run hundreds of guys through it by the time it gets to you. So we know what works, we know what is revamped. We also have a community that is constantly active of working with men just like you on a daily basis. We have over 30 hours of calls a week. We have multiple time zones being hit. It's insane, you don't have to be on all those calls, you just have to be on some of them. But when you're interactive in that community, you're gonna get the support that you need in order to better yourself as a man. Super, super important for you to to, to really take that step in. That being said, gentlemen, this is a very complex issue. There's a lot to it. I don't want to stimulate the hate by it. I don't want to stimulate any politicization of it because when we get things political and we move into the social, we get away from the psychological, we get away from your personal growth that can massively improve from that. And that's what I'm interested in. We have problems that happen reoccurring in our society, but they are solved by your individual measures. So that is something that I want you to do. If this is something that resonated to you, definitely reach out to me, come on by the Austin Men's Development Group on Facebook, but if you are serious about change and solving issues in your life, don't waste any more of your own time. Sign up for Men's Development Excellence and we will talk to you soon. All right, later.